Hi everyone, my name is Eike Schneiders and on behalf of myself and my co-authors from the University of Nottingham, the Open University and the artist group Blast Theory, I have the pleasure to present our paper titled Designing Multispecies Worlds for Robots, Cats and Humans. The paper presents the Cat Royale project, a performance-led or artist-led research project emphasizing more than the human or specifically an animal-centric perspective. This statement immediately raises two questions. Firstly, why does the HCI or HRI community need animal-centric research? And secondly, why investigate this using a performance or artist-led research approach? Let's start with the first question. Why animal-centric research? Autonomous systems such as robots are to an increasing extent being deployed in the wild in unstructured and complicated environments. And this in turn means that the robots that are present in this shared environment need to be able to take account for a vast variety of actors. However, current research is typical taking a human-centric perspective. Nevertheless, robots are encountering non-human actors, and this happens regardless of if we design for it or not. Examples include lawn mowing robots and hedgehogs, delivery robots and dogs, or the all-time YouTube favorite cats riding vacuuming robots. Cat Royale is an investigation of how the entire animal world or environment could look when we emphasize the animal's perspective in the design process. The second question, why use a performance-led or artist-led research approach? Firstly, while we as academics often consider ourselves creative, compared with artists, many of us are not. And by involving creative professionals and putting them behind the steering wheel, we get the opportunity to conduct research of emerging technologies in ways we would never have imagined. Secondly, art has the capacity to interrogate societal issues in a way that has the potential to engage the general public to a much higher extent than research papers could. In this particular case, Cat Royale interrogates questions in relation to trustworthy autonomous systems. Thirdly, Autonomous systems are often not deployed in fully controlled environments. Therefore, the investigation of these systems in uncontrolled and at times chaotic environments can produce interesting results in its own regards. And lastly, in case anyone needs an additional reason, the creative industries is a major factor to the economy. For instance, in 2021, the creative industries has contributed 5.6% of the total gross value added to the UK economy. So, with Catrael, we attempted to investigate the following initial question. How do we situate an autonomous system within a wider environment which is simultaneously engaging for spectators, ensures cat well-being, and is suitable for the autonomous system to operate in? In this talk, I'm going to highlight three specific elements of this question, and more can be found in the paper. Specifically, I'm going to talk about the autonomous systems, the environment, as well as the spectator engagement. Let's start with the environment or the enclosure. As for the entire project, the animal welfare was the key priority and the enclosure needed to be designed with this in mind. To ensure this, we made sure to include an abundance of voices in the project, including feline behaviorists, members of the general public, animal computer interaction specialists and veterinarians to mention but a few. This led to a final cat-friendly design, including perches, walkways, dens, cat-friendly plants, water fountains, scratch-friendly surfaces, curved surfaces, and more. And given that these were designed with animal friendliness in mind, some of these elements, such as the slippery sloped surfaces, contributed to making this environment particularly unfriendly for humans. Next, we have the robot. And the robot is more than just the device in the center of the room, tasked with the entertainment of the cats. It consists of a series of subsystems, three of which I will briefly present. Firstly, as the robot was tasked with entertaining each cat based on what they liked, and given that Clover, Ghostbuster and Pumpkin, our three cats, have different personalities and preferences, we needed a system able to tell the cats apart. To this end, we developed the computer vision system, which was tasked with the identification of each individual cat and its position and current activity. 
In order to train the CV model, we use the crowdsourcing platform Zooniverse to collect a labeled dataset of cats and their activities consisting of 7,300 videos. Secondly, the core element of the robot's autonomy, the decision engine. The decision engine's task was to propose engaging activities targeted at maximizing each individual's cat's happiness. In roughly six minute intervals, the decision engine would suggest games such as Prey Game with Bird Colors, targeted at Ghostbuster. It was then approved or rejected by the lead artist, executed by the robot, while being monitored by the robot wrangler. And finally, the resulting data, including the task's impact on the cat's happiness, was fed back into the decision engine to inform future decisions. The third system was the control system. The control system acted as an interface between the control room, specifically the robot wrangler, and the robot. While the robot operated the task autonomously, this happened under supervision and was initiated through the control system. The last element in our initial question was related to the need for spectator engagement. As Cat Royale was an artistic installation, this had to be made available to audiences around the world. And for this purpose, the 12 days with two daily sessions of three hours each were filmed by eight cameras, resulting in 576 hours of footage from different angles. These were edited in real time by the dedicated television vision mixer in order to create the daily six hour movie which was streamed to the Curiosity World Science Festival in Brisbane, Australia. Following Brisbane, the movie was also presented at the National Science Gallery in London, as well as the Wales Millennium Centre in Cardiff, with additional demonstrations planned in the future. In addition to these public events, each day of the installation of the project resulted in one daily highlight video that was made available to social media and YouTube, resulting in tens of thousands of views and an abundance of public engagement. So, now that we have heard a little bit about the project, let's see a small clip from the seventh day of the 12th day installation. Can AI make cats happier? Every day, Clover, Pumpkin and Ghostbuster spend a few hours inside this utopia for cats. An artificial intelligence offers games for the cats using a robot arm and tries to make the cats happier. This is Cat Royale. Clover, audacious as ever, finds new ways to enter the den. And she and the orange toy bird have a powerful connection. Ghostbuster is still bossing it, and the AI plays its strongest card for him with the helicopter toy. Like Clover, he's got the hang of pulling a toy off the rack when he wants a bit of extra playtime. The artists bought and tested over 80 toys for Cat Royale, but after a day or two where the AI was having less success at offering games that the cats enjoyed, it was time to break out the big guns. At 10 past 4 p.m. on day seven, the robot deployed a piece of string. So, one of the paper's contributions is the unraveling of the narrative that is Cat Royale, some of which we've just seen. What happened? How did a typical, or an unusual, cat-robot encounter unfold? And who was in control here? These are some examples of questions that the paper discusses. And in this brief talk, I want to look further at the question, who is in control? Who is in control might seem like such a trivial question, and one might think the answer could be, well, the people in the control room. But who are the people in the control room? Is it the artist in that is in control? as they are the ones deciding which suggestion by the decision engine is accepted or rejected. Is the robot operator in control, as they initiate the activity the robot will carry out, ultimately leading to the engagement of the cats? Another interpretation could be that it is in fact the robotic system that is in control, 
as the decision engine suggests which activities and toys are used, as well as which cat should be targeted. One could argue that it is thereby ultimately the decision engine who decides who is deserving of increased happiness. Lastly, the cats might be in control. After all, they choose when to engage with the robot and when to withdraw, and ultimately deciding if the artistic installation might be considered engaging or not from the audience's perspective. While we in the paper demonstrate how all of these are in fact true, the example I want to show here is that the cat can be in control. In the following short video, we see two encounters of Clover, one of the three cats, with the robot and the toys. In the first encounter, while the robot considers the game completed, Clover clearly disagrees, dragging the toy into her den, ultimately disempowering all remaining actors. In the second short clip, Clover physically overpowers the robot by pulling against its natural direction of movement, ultimately rendering the robot and by extension the control room powerless. Even though she now has the toy, Clover is not done. What's going through Clover's mind here? Is she just seeing an orange bird? Or does she realise it's a toy bird? Is she aware of the robot? And if so, does she care? So what did we learn from Catrail? We learned that when designing autonomous or semi-autonomous systems, designing just the interaction might not be enough. Where possible, considerations of the stuff, the spaces and the services needed to make the system operate successfully are equally important. Furthermore, we learned that even when designing systems from an animal-centric point of view, humans might still be necessary. Tasks that still might require human intervention include ensuring animal welfare or robot wrangling. In Cat Real, these tasks were carried out by the animal welfare officer, described in the paper, as well as the robot wrangler. More details on everything presented here can of course be found in the paper. And with that, I say thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer questions.